Rating, I think, is pretty important because it shows how hard the course is. 
and the coaches want to see you're playing hard for. I also asked Gianna to give me a list of 50 schools that he was interested in. You really have to keep your options open because each school is only going to have one to two spots per year, for graduating year. I actually did a lot of work and I went to each school's website and I determined how many spots were available in his year. And then I had them order, rank in order of interest of the schools as was far reach top, high, medium, low. Because you just never know. Um, I've seen some kids get recruited to top schools, yet they weren't ranked the highest, but they probably had some kind of relationship with the coach um, because they made the effort to go out and meet the coach or something. We started fit golf, which I, or some golf fitness, which I think was really important for Jalen. Um, another really important thing that I think is to make unofficial visits to colleges, however you can, um, try to get meet the coaches. You can call the assistant coaches and make appointments to meet with the coaches. They'll meet with you; they're happy to. Um, like you give them their resume um, ahead of time, so they know who you are, and you ask. It's just really important, I think, to get face-to-face -face time with coaches um, so they know who you are and could put a face to a name. Now, our first unofficial visit was to uh, University of Texas, Austin. Uh, we happened to be playing a tournament out in AJGA over at Texas A&M that year. So I made appointments to go see University of Texas and Texas A&M and meet with coaches. Um, one of the reasons, too, I wanted Jalen to meet with University of Texas because I wanted him to he had high expectations, and the University of Texas is a top-ranked D1 school. And I kind of want to set his expectations and level set on because, you know, kids have dreams, they want to play top schools, but you don't want to put them down because you want them to know what reality is and be realistic about their playing abilities to the school. And then February, send a cover letter and he, to the, by email to coaches and assistant coaches with your resume and it just expressing your interest in the school. March is when you have to start planning your spring summer schedule and then play, start playing the local tournaments. I know the Philly Junior PGA and the IJTG has local tournaments in this area. So you want to get them into tournament mode. That's very important to get to tournament mode. Um, spring summer, you can email coaches on your upcoming tournament it's near the school that you're interested in and especially if you qualify for a large independent tournament and ask them to come watch you play if they can. You also want to be able to play tournaments that uh, are 36 holes in the day, one day, one day or if, you, if it's available. Um, but only 36 to 54 hole tournaments are counted on JGS. And JGS is a very important uh, ranking system for college coaches. And again, continue unofficial visits. Um, sophomore year and junior year are very critical years between your spring and summer. Again, the fall, winter, sophomore year, at the end of the season, you send out an updated resume with your results. Um, you should also do volunteer charity work. Jalen did the um, AJGA birdies for charity. There's also the first team program that you volunteer for. But any volunteer work, it just looks good on your resume. Um, and then continue to do unofficial college visits. Um, also, he did doing a golf camp is pretty important. I think that was actually the key that Jalen got recruited to the University of San Francisco. Uh, we went to the Stanford University golf camp the summer after sophomore year. And we visited the University of San Francisco and Stanford. And it happened to be that the University of San Francisco coaches were going to be at the golf camp also. So they actually got to see him at a different level. They saw him on a personal level, his playing level, um, all different kinds, of, you know, just being around them. They want to see you play. Um, he also got to meet some other coaches there. Um, UC Davis, University of Colorado, was, he was an assistant coach there, but he later moved to uh, George Washington University as a head coach. Um, so I, I think golf camp is very important too. Uh, there's a website where there's a college golf camps, and they offer a pretty decent college camp where a lot of coaches seem to go to. Um, you, can, you kind of want to get yourself in front of coaches. So junior year, um, we did the same thing. September 1st is when they can start to, coaches can start to email you and write letters. We also did a swing video and we just posted it on YouTube. Uh, then again, November, December, we sent out his updated resume with his swing video. 
in spring summer is you start you can register your NCAA ID as amateur status. Um, you also do your SATs, ACTs, and you have your scores sent directly to the NCAA ID, which I think it's um, 99999, I think it is that. Right. It is it? <laughs> and then July 1st is when college coaches can start to call you once per week. And you can have, uh, I think, three face-to-face -face meetings. Like, this is what I knew back then. I think things keep on changing every year. Um, now that it's September, September 1st of the junior year, they moved it back. Okay. Oh, they moved it to. Oh, okay. Um, and then also, coaches can start to talk to you during tournaments. Uh, I think it's three times total during the summer after junior year. They, they keep changing. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, just keep playing tournaments and making unofficial visits. And then senior year is when you can make official visits. They'll invite you to come visit the school. And November 15th would be the early science day. So that's kind of a recommended time thing. You kind of have to stay on top of it, stay on top of your, your resume, your tournament summary, um, keeping contact, communication is very good. So, the next section is just I listed some important websites that was useful over the years. Uh, the King College Golf Guide gives a lot of information about the schools, who the coaches are, contacts, um, their academics, the NCAA ID website, a golf stat, Birdie Fire, and Golf League has all the college rankings. So you can go on their websites and look at where the schools are ranked. Another important thing is to see, when you look at schools, you want to see what conference they play in, and you want to look at their tournament schedule and see where they play. Uh, and then I listed all those junior leagues. There's a lot of junior leagues out there. Um, Philly Junior is a really good one to play locally. You can also qualify for the PGA Championship, which is a very big tournament. Uh, Gap play all the junior events, and, still, and also the, the Philly Am and the Open. You want to be able to play the adult competitions as well. Um, USGA, the Junior Am, Amateur, uh, PGA's Junior Series, they have a list, they have a tournament schedule, and you can also qualify for the PGA Championship. American Junior Golf Association, which is the Premier League, <laughs> um, to play in AJGA, you have to earn stars. And the more you have, the better it is to get into open tournaments with strong fields. Um, you, can, you can play the Junior All-Star in AJGA, which is for 12 to 15, and I think you can play as many as you want. But that's a really good way to earn stars. And we also uh, play as many qualifiers as you can. You should start spring, summer, before freshman year to earn stars. We used to, his freshman year, we used to go around and just play qualifiers because we wanted to earn stars for the sophomore year because I knew sophomore year was very important. Um, so try to play open tournaments. In the beginning, try to play open tournaments with large fields, such as the Killington, Vermont, Maine, Rochester, New York, and Kentucky tournaments. They're easier to get into because their field size is like 120. Um, a lot of other open tournaments are field size only like 50 to 60. You also want to play strong tournaments. Um, being able to play the AJGA Easter tournaments is uh, very key. Um, they have one in Arizona, Florida, Texas. A lot of coaches go to these tournaments. Uh, you can also go to the Junior Golf Scoreboard and you can search by tournaments by state and list a, a lot of tournaments, a lot of independent tournaments. Um, IJGT is expensive, but there are some local tournaments. Um, SCWT is expensive, but required and requires travel. There's also, um, I see that the Hurricane Junior Golf Tour started in this area. Um, they used to be more down south in Florida, and they're trying to work their way up here and have tournaments around here. And I listed a lot of independent tournaments. Um, these are ones that you try, should try to get into. Callaway Junior World Golf Championship is in San Diego, and there's a qualifier through the JGA. And I don't know if anybody knows JGA. They have a tournament. It's more of South Jersey, but he does qualifiers for Callaway. Um, the Junior PGA Championship is through the Philly Junior PGA. Uh, Scott Rocks Memorial is another really good, strong tournament. It's in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, US Junior Am, very strong tournament. Um, 
Paul Myers is your gap, or you can also look on their website. Uh, the, another one, the Trusted Choice Big Eye, there's a qualifier in the JGA locally that you can try to qualify for too. So, coming up, my top recommendations is, um, well for us living in the Northeast, it's, it's not, I don't think it's really necessary to travel play winter tournaments. Um, that was one of the errors that we found. So we did travel to Florida a couple times to play S FCWT. Um, but Jalen wasn't at, at his uh, prime playing capability at that time, so he didn't really do that well. Uh, keep options open to the number of schools. There's a lot of schools out there. You want to keep your options open. Um, visit schools, meet with coaches. Just contact the assistant coaches, and they'll be happy to meet with you. They're the ones streaming you out for the head coaches. You want to ask about philosophy, scholarships, financial aid, their policy procedures, recruiting goals. Communicate with them. Um, Constantly, you know, play tournaments near the school that you're interested in, so they can hopefully come and watch you play. Play strong fields. Play long yardages. You have to be able to play long yardages, 6,700 yards plus. You know, every college tournament that Jalen has played has been over 7,000 yards right now. So you have to be able to play long tournament, long yardages for boys. I don't know about girls. 5,800. Um, 5, <laughs> um, I guess, uh, you know, just. Keep on top of everything. Another thing, coaches move around a lot. Assistant coaches become coaches, head coaches in other schools. So you just got to watch that. You also have to like the coaches that you meet. There are some schools we visited, and I did not get a very good feeling from the coaches, so you have to like them. Um, I have to hurry up. So, uh, really, Jalen going to the college camp and making the U.S. Junior Am, uh, summer after junior, really locked in his scholarship. Um, you just have to get in front of the coaches, and they wanted to see you play on the course and see how you can handle the ups and downs. If you do bad, they want to see that you can recover from it. So, and I guess in the end, you know, Jalen, we received athletic and academic scholarships. Um, he had a pretty good, we got to get free clubs from Jalen made, and all kinds of workout gear from Adidas and Nike, and he has five rotating home courses, and one of them is the Olympic. Um, they're actually going to host a tournament there in two years. And, they, again, they have to, his, he had a really hard time adjusting because of the schedule. The schedule is very demanding. He really didn't have time to do anything for himself. He didn't have time to talk to me. Um, <laughs> so, and plus we're on a three-hour time zone. It's different. So he really, you know, it was hard to get in touch with him. But um, his, his schedule is very, very demanding. I think he is just settling in this past couple weeks. Um, they also, I one thing they pointed out, study hall, they have to attend study hall eight hours a week at night until they get a 3.2 GPA. That's their requirement there. Um, they do have academic sports therapy, doctors, fitness, nutritionists, mental support. And they have to, kids have to be responsible for staying on top of their academics. Um, they don't, they have to be able to talk to the teachers, email the teachers, and keep on top of everything and be responsible to themselves. I and mean, when they're out at the tournaments, at night, they have to come home and do homework and send it in. So kids have to be really disciplined. Um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I don't know. And you have to qualify amongst your teammates. So there's 10 people and there's five players that normally go in the tournament. And you, but you can also earn, earn exemptions. If you do well in the tournament, you can earn exemptions for the next tournament. So you're competing against your own teammates. And contracts are renewed annually, usually. So. At USF, you know, coaches will set goals for you to achieve, and then if you achieve your goals, you get additional scholarships the following year. 